magic or is it madness? I've got a confession to make. Is it a dream or more than you see? I've never climbed a mountain. Faces in the clouds. Never swum in a lake. Traces on the ground. I was in a cave once. I'm beginning to think that I might be missing something. We all ready? Yes, sir. I asked the best modern day explorers, take me to the ends of the earth. And they said, oh, we can go further than that. Three, two, one, lights off. Let's see what's out there. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. We think we know our planet, but there's still a secret world to be discovered. If you go to the right place with the right guide, you just might find a portal into it. And we need the helmet because the volcano spits rocks up in the air as if this helmet's going to do something <laughs> with one of these big rocks. I sure hope you know where you're going. I hope so, too. <laughs> I almost guarantee you you're going to survive. <laughs> I thought you were going to freak out, but you just kept going. I'm an actor. I pretend for a living. <laughs> <laughs> the crossing. That's spectacular. This is a bucket list moment. My grandmother used to say, all the best things in life lived on the other side of fear. I sure hope Gigi was right.
1888, the National Geographic Society set out to explore the world. But to understand where we're going, we must first explore where we began. And from there, our society takes off. Disney will pay $52.4 billion from 21st Century Fox. What's up guys, it's Jason here and welcome back to my YouTube channel, National Geographic Insight. Who here remembers National Geographic from decades ago? Those old thick magazines with the yellow borders. The life and death of National Geographic Society is a tale as old as time. If you haven't followed the news in the past one, two decades, well, you're in for a treat. The society, unable to keep itself afloat, looked for nefarious means by which to survive. In this video, we will talk about the history of the National Geographic Society, the National Geographic Society's brushes with controversy, the sellout to Deal to Fox, and the future of National Geographic in the House of Mouse. Before we begin, if you wouldn't mind just tapping that like button for the YouTube algorithm, I'd really appreciate it, as this is a brand new channel I started this year. If you've ever read a Nat Geo magazine from your younger days, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for new videos each week. Thanks for doing that, and now let's continue on with what happened to National Geographic. The History of National Geographic Society Let me take you back. In the beginning, on January 13, 1888, yes, 1888, a group of scientists and explorers partied at the Cosmos Club in Washington, D.C. Their mission, create a club or society for the increase and diffusion of geographical knowledge. The group codified its organization, establishing bylaws, formed a constitution, and elected Gardener Green Hubbard as its first president. His more famous son-in-law, Alexander Graham Bell, succeeded him in 1897 to become the second-ever president. Under his reign, Bell appointed his son-in-law, Gilbert Hovey Grosvenor, as the first full-time editor. Bell and Grosvenor came up with the idea of society members. To entice people, they were the first to use narrative photography in magazines. Nepotism notwithstanding, Grosvenor was a long-lived editor and lasting until the middle of the 20th century, until 1954. In the 1921 issue of advertising journal Printers Inc., Fred Bernard said it first, One look is worth a thousand words. The magazine instantly depicted what took writers thousands of words to accomplish. In 1888, the first National Geographic magazine hit the newsstands as the society's official journal. In 1910, the magazine adopted the yellow border synonymous with National Geographic. The Society's Brushes with Controversy National Geographic has not been without controversy. For many people, the magazine was the first time people saw naked boobs. Readers could gaze at unclothed tribal women. Some call the photos of nude brown women important anthropological work. Others call it naked exploitation of foreigners, especially non-white foreigners. In 2007, then-CEO of the National Geographic Society, John Fahey, said that profit was not his motivation, but the business of bringing the world to the people and inspiring people to take care of the planet. At the time, the company boasted about 9 million subscribers. 9 million is a respectable number, but a drop off from its peak of 12 million subscribers in the 1980s. Since 2007, subscription numbers have dropped to just 3 million in the United States. Why did the National Geographic Society keep hemorrhaging subscribers? Part of the problem was Fahey. From 1998 to 2010, as CEO, Fahey oversaw the shift in the magazine's story focus and mission statement. Recall that Fahey's mission was to inspire people to take care of the planet. As a result of the change, fewer human interest pieces and an increase in stories on the environment and animals. In a 2012 interview with Wall Street Journal, Fahey later acknowledged that the shift in focus to environmentalism did not improve subscription holder retention. The following year, in 2013, National Geographic stained its reputation. Egypt's keeper of antiquities, Dr. Zahi Hawass, allegedly courted National Geographic. The Egyptian archaeologist, Egyptologist, and disgraced Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs accepted bribes from National Geographic for access to antiquities, pyramids, and King Tutankhamun. 
The amount of money exchanged ranged from $80,000 to $200,000 a year, which may have been illegal under U.S. law. National Geographic and Dr. Hawass insisted that everything was on the up and up, but the stain of the accusation damaged the company's reputation. Fahey's missteps pale in comparison with National Geographic's deal with the devil. The Deal Elizabethan playwright Christopher Marlowe's The Tragical History of the Life and Death of Dr. Faustus dramatizes Faustus' demonic bargain with Mephistopheles. The Faustian bargain sees our Dr. Faustus exchanging his soul for knowledge and power. Faustus gains excellent knowledge and power, but is eventually dragged down into hell by Mephistopheles. National Geographic made its deal with the devil in the early 90s. Their Faustian bargain with Rupert Murdoch's Fox Media Empire. Then they got sold to the mouse, the very icon of a false idol. Disney collected National Geographic as part of its $52 billion purchase of 21st Century Fox. Way back in 2001, National Geographic made a deal with Mephistopheles himself, Rupert Murdoch. Murdoch of Fox Media Network fame grew the brand and forced it into half a billion homes in most countries on the face of the earth. In return, National Geographic sold its soul to remain solvent, even as society membership plummet. The big incentive for the National Geographic Society was a push into media, specifically television. The money incentive made a deal with Fox more palatable for society members. After all, what could be better for their philanthropic ventures than the cold, hard cash that ad revenue and subscriptions to cable TV could offer? The society's research, grants, and travel expenses were astronomical. Fox offered the solution. All National Geographic had to do was sign the dotted line in blood and shift from a non-profit venture into a for-profit media corporation. Fox would pay the society millions of dollars per year for Nat Geo content. The money grab did not sit well with the philanthropic donors and base that comprised most National Geographic's members. The TV media arm constantly quarreled with the magazine staff. Each department sought out its advertisers and tried to define the brand differently to different people. As Abe Lincoln himself had said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That conflict of division came to fruition in multiple behind-the-scenes skirmishes. The National Geographic Society board tried to put the kibosh on several reality TV shows. Fox decided that trashy reality TV shows were the future of television. There was a war of wills, and ultimately Fox won out. From Fox's victory, National Geographic birthed the reality TV shows Doomsday Preppers, Digger, and Nazi War Diggers. Each show had its share of controversy and diminished the brand's reputation. In the end, money won out. National Geographic degraded itself with the low-brow, lowest common denominator, trashy reality TV show lineup. First, there was Doomsday Preppers, a show that followed slaw-jawed survivalists preparing for the impending apocalypse. That's the sneaky thing about evil men like Murdoch. They leverage a respected and well-known name like Nat Geo and then propagandize you with shows with lovable idiots. To wit, Doomsday Preppers was the highest rated show in National Geographic's history in its first year. The company was forced to smother the rating baby in its crib as it provided a vocal and persistent platform for crazed conspiracy theorists with violent ideologies. Who can forget gun nut James Yeager? Yeager ranted on YouTube, as gun nuts want to do, about his God-given right to execute anyone who challenged his right to own a gun. I'll be glad to fire the first shot. Start killing people. YouTube removed the video, then National Geographic had to pull the plug on the episode. What? What the f The Sandy Hook Massacre was barely a year old. Then it became public knowledge that the Sandy Hook shooter, Adam Lanza, was a hardcore survivalist and doomsday prepper. As a result, a Change.org petition argued that National Geographic, the Murdoch-infected portion, was responsible for providing a platform for violent, deranged individuals. Despite being a ratings bonanza, National Geographic canceled the show in 2014. Platforming gun nuts was not the only misstep with National Geographic. They also dabbed their toes into light looting and pillaging with the show Diggers. Larger-than-life characters King George Wyant and his sidekick Tim Saylor traversed the United States to hunt for historical artifacts. In other words, the pair were looting. Sarah Har in the Society for American Archaeology's magazine reported that the show violated the organization's ethical principles who engage in exploiting the past motivated by self-interest. That is not a good look for a society that ostensibly wants to make people care about the world. Exploitation is not in line with the National Geographic Society, but it is Rupert Murdoch's specialty. Amid the controversies and declining subscribers, Murdoch delivered the coup de grace to the once revered society. In 2015, Fox rolled National Geographic into its media empire. 
Like a zebra being drugged into the abyss by a crocodile, Fox devoured Nat Geo. While the society exists as a separate organism, the fact remains that the Fox Media Empire had its tendrils in the operation of National Geographic. National Geographic shifted from being a non-profit organization into a for-profit corporation accountable to its stakeholders. In late October and early November 2015, the deal with the devil came to fruition. First, National Geographic drastically slashed its staffing in a cost-saving move. According to Rupert Murdoch's brood, James Murdoch, nothing would substantially change at National Geographic when Fox subsumed the company. Like everything that oozes out of the Murdoch's mouth, that was a lie. It was a nasty truth that nothing in National Geographic made money, not the magazine or TV shows. The only thing that would bring profit was Murdoch's axe. And the axe was hungry in the fall of 2015. Starting in October of 2015, Fox made significant cuts to staffing. The reductions continued into November. Magazine subscriptions were dropping, so were the numbers of employees. As the body count grew, the money for the society's endowment grew. All told, the company axed about 2,000 people, the most extensive mass firing in the society's 133-year history. Most of those terminations came with a terse email, a pat on the back, and a boot out the door. To keep its philanthropy alive, National Geographic sold its soul. The days of millions and millions of magazine subscriptions were over. While not significant, Fox's influence on the TV side of things proved to be just the financial boom that the society needed to continue operations. In 2015, Nat Geo, the immediate arm of the National Geographic Society, boasted a quarter of billion dollars in cable TV fees. Ad revenue skyrocketed, but at what cost? What did the company even stand for anymore? As the society platformed the likes of Bill O'Reilly, the society's waning influence became more apparent. Fox would no longer be the silent partner in the relationship. O'Reilly's Killing Reagan aired in 2016. That spiral seemed to be the final death knell for the National Geographic Society. Then Disney entered the arena. Future with House of Mouse As Qui-Gon Jinn says in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, There's always a bigger fish. There's always a bigger fish. As part of its 2020 acquisition of Murdoch's media empire, Disney killed the 20th Century Fox brand. It's now the more mundane 20th century television. National Geographic's media arm came as part of the $71.3 billion deal. Disney is no stranger to exploiting and commoditizing the natural world, so its acquisition of National Geographic makes sense in a grossly exploitive kind of way. In 1958, Disney released the movie White Wilderness. In that movie, Disney Studios filmed the lives of lemmings, cute little rodents that live in the frozen tundra. The movie helped establish the lemming of a cliff suicide myth. In 1983, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation revealed that Disney purchased the lemmings and had its directors fling the live rodents off the cliff to make for compelling wildlife videography. Disney's Discovery Island was ostensibly a bird sanctuary. Located in Disney World, the island provided habitat for local bird species. The zoology park was a hit with guests. But the guests didn't know that Disney's park operators regularly abused the animals. In 1989, the Orlando Sentinel reported that Disney employees beat birds and starved them to death. In the end, Disney paid a pittance of a fine and closed the park. Ten years after the bird murder at Discovery Island, Disney opened an attraction named Animal Kingdom. The park was supposed to be a celebration of biodiversity in the Animal Kingdom. Instead, about 30 animals died in transit to the park or in the park from starvation, abuse, and neglect. Disney has plenty of practice exploiting and destroying the natural world. As the behemoth media company consumes the National Geographic brand, there are many concerns and questions. In the end, the magazine and TV shows are now the same organization. They are part of the for-profit National Geographic partners. As the details of the Disney purchase come to light, the harsh reality materializes. We are left with the hollow, money-grubbing, dead National Geographic Society owned by Disney and slave to their corporate interests. It was a long, inevitable decline for the National Geographic Society. Gone are the halcyon days of Alexander Graham Bell in the pursuit of knowledge. Let's see what the mouse has in store for the company. The devil, as always, is in the details. So, with that said, thank you so much for watching my video. What do you think of National Geographic? Is there anything you would have done differently if you were managing the company? There was a significant amount of research, production, and reading old issues of National Geographic that went into making this video possible. If you haven't seen already, check out my video on the rise and fall of Playboy and the rise and fall of Toys R Us. Let me know if there's any other companies you'd like me to explore. As always, stay happy and healthy and stay tuned for another episode of Company Insight next week.